All right, if you're like me, you probably have gone onto Google Image Search looking for logos with transparent backgrounds. You might also have gone looking for PNG files and realized they're not real transparent backgrounds and feel cheated. So in this video, I'm going to show you a simple technique in Adobe Photoshop, how you can remove backgrounds from JPEG logos. All right, my name is William Ong. I'm a photographer, videographer, and also a content creator. I'm also a full-time lecturer. So as in creative industry, I work with so many clients, small to medium businesses, and from time to time, I need to feature logos from businesses in my videos or motion graphics. And when we ask for high resolution logos, unfortunately, not everybody has the same idea of what a high resolution image means. Ideally, it would be a vector file such as Adobe Illustrator or EPS files. Or count yourself lucky if you did not receive your logo in a Microsoft Word document or in a PowerPoint file format. So technically, getting a high resolution JPEG should be reasonably okay, but I'm not expecting transparent backgrounds. So if you're looking for logos through Google Images, you want to look for the resolution. So ideally, if your logo has about a thousand pixels or more, that's ideal. But if your logo size is like small, like 400, 300 pixels, you might end up with fuzzy edges. So that's not really ideal. So keep that in mind, the high resolution logo you can get, the better it is. All right, now we are in Adobe Photoshop with an example here. So we have a Burger King logo with white background. So as a first demonstration, I'm gonna show you quite quickly how you can remove the background. But don't worry, I'm gonna slow it down and explain it to you step by step in the next part of the video. All right, as my first demonstration, I'm just gonna duplicate this layer and I'm just gonna hide the original layer. I'm gonna select and copy this and create a layer mask go inside the layer mask, paste the logo. Now I'm going to go to levels, I'm going to pick the black eyedropper, turn it black to white. And because of my layer mask is opposite, I'm going to press command I to invert that. And that's kind of it. If you look at that, I've got a transparent logo. All right, let me just break it down step by step and explain to you why or how I did that. First of all, I'm just going to revert this to restart the file. So here we are, we have a logo file with flattened white background. So to start this, I'm going to duplicate this layer. This is completely optional, but make it a good habit so that we can always preserve the original logo layer untouched. To duplicate that, you can press Command J or Control J on the keyboard. Alternatively, you can also drag the layer onto the new layer icon on the layer panel and you get a logo there. I'm going to hide the original layer by clicking on the I icon. I'm going to make sure this layer is selected. So in the next step, we're going to select and copy the logo. To do that, it's really simple. You need to go to select, choose select all, or press command A or control A. The next step, go to edit, copy. You can also press command C or control C. All right, now that logo is copied to the temporary space, we're going to create a layer mask and paste it there. To create a layer mask, all you need to do is Go to the layer panel, select on this layer mask icon and just click it once. All right, so it creates a layer mask, doesn't do anything at the moment. What we want to do is we want to go inside the layer mask and paste a logo that we have copied earlier. So to do that, you can press option or alt key on the keyboard, click on the layer mask. Remember, this is the layer mask. So option and click on that. So you might notice that your canvas is gone completely white. And that's fine because we're inside the layer mask. What we're going to do is we're going to paste the logo that we've copied earlier. So you can go to edit, paste, or simply press command V or control V. All right, the logo that we have copied is now pasted in a black and white format. Remember, a layer mask can only contain black, white, or shades of gray. So what we want to do is we want to fine tune and make every part of the logo black. To do that, I'm going to use levels. So you can go to image, adjustments, and level. You can also press Command L or Control L on the keyboard. So now that levels panel is open, what we want to use is we want to use these eyedroppers on the right side of the panel. The left one is the black point eyedropper, and then the white one is the white point eyedropper. All you need to do is simply pick the black eyedropper, move the mouse cursor over the image, look for the shade of gray that is the lightest tone that you have on your logo, and just click on that once. Notice that your entire logo goes black. That looks very good. I'm going to press OK. Remember, we're still inside the layer mask. So one thing to understand about layer masks is everything that's marked with black 
will not be visible. So only the parts that's marked with white will be visible. So in this scenario, it is completely opposite of what we want to do. So we want the red, yellow, and blue shades to be visible, which are currently black. The fix is really easy. All you need to do is invert. So to do that, go back to Image, Adjustments, and choose Invert. And again, you can press Command I or Control I on the keyboard. All right, this is exactly what we need. The area that we want to be visible on the logo are now white, and the white background area that we don't want to be visible is now black. So what you can do now is come back to the layer panel, click on the icon on the left, and you should have a transparent logo. One thing to take note though, if you still have the selection active, which you can see by the marching ends on the edge of the logo, you can simply deselect that. To do that, go to select, deselect, or press Command D or Control D on the keyboard. There we go, you have a transparent logo. So that technique is simple, but there is a bit of fine tuning that may be required. So now the logo is transparent and looking good. However, if you were to put this logo against a color background, it may not be very clear. Let's test it out. So to check, I'm just gonna simply apply a gradient layer. You can apply a solid color, you can put it against any images you want, that will be fine. But I'm just gonna apply a gradient layer here. So click on the gradient. So inside the gradient, you can give any color you like. I'm just gonna click on that down arrow, scroll down somewhere, look for maybe something like pastels, and this color will be fine. All right, currently my gradient sits on top. I'm just gonna drag it below the logo. Now you can see the edges aren't very clean. We need to fine tune the selection. We already have made the selection in the layer mask. To recall the selection that you already have, what you wanna do is hold down the command or control key on the keyboard, click on the layer mask. Remember, the black and white thing is the layer mask. This is your layer, this is your layer mask. So what you want to do is hold down the command or control key. So you notice that the cursor changes to the little hand icon with the square at the bottom. So that's what happened when you hold down the command or the control, click on that. And you'll notice that it brings back the selection information that we had earlier. So now with the selection active, I'm going to select on the logo layer. So you want to make sure this logo part is activated with the white box surrounding here. So the next step, we're going to select, select and mask. So you'll notice that the select and mask properties are open up on the right side of the panel. So first of all, we want to change the edge detection to about one or two pixels. Turn on the smart radius. And then second, we scroll down all the way to the bottom. Under the output settings, check the decontaminate colors. And the output, we can choose new layer with layer mask. This will be the final layer that we need. Press OK. There we go. You can see that the edges are now super clean. We can select this layer, delete it. We can select this layer, delete it. Now you have a really nice and clean logo with super clean edges. All right, let me quickly do another demo with a different logo. Here we are, we have a simple logo here. So I'm gonna click on that, press Command J to duplicate that. Hide this layer, select all by pressing Command A, copy by pressing Command C, and then create a layer mask. I go into the layer mask by holding Option click on that and then Command V to paste this logo. I'm going to press Command L for levels. I'm going to pick the black eyedropper and click on the lightest shade of the gray in the logo. If your background is not quite white, you can also select the white eyedropper, click on the white background. Okay, we're going to press OK. So as we know, the layer mask is currently opposite of what we want. We want these areas to be visible. We want these to be invisible. So easy fix is to press the Command I to invert the layer mask. So now that's done, we can go back to click on the layer. So we will have a decent transparent logo. But as we know, this is not the best quality. So to fix that, we're going to press Command and click on the layer mask one more time while this layer is active. Remember, before you go to select and mask, you want to make sure this layer is active. So now go to select, choose select and mask. Under the radius slider, I'm going to put a value of one pixel and turn on the smart radius. Scroll all the way to the bottom, go to the output settings, check decontaminate colors. Same thing, output to new layer with layer mask, press OK. So this is the final logo that I need. I can select this and delete it. I hope you find this video tutorial useful for you. And thank you for watching and follow me for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next.